Hello everybody, today I am starting module 3 and this is the lecture 1 of module 3. Uh, in this lecture, I will actually step into the continuous system. So far, I have discussed about the fundamental assumptions and techniques necessary to study the structural dynamics and different modeling techniques that means different methods of formulating the differential equations of motion then they are solution technique in general I have discussed. Now in this lecture I will start the continuous system with first chapter as the one dimensional wave equation which is analogous to the vib transverse vibration of string flexible string. So, today our topic is one dimensional wave equation. So, here in this lecture I will cover mainly the formulation of the equation of motion of the transverse vibration of string which is used to study the one dimensional wave propagation. So, this formulation or derivation of the equation of motion I will uh, carry out in three different ways. First I will uh, show you that by considering the string as a system of discrete masses interconnected by uh, massless uh, string, how the equation of motion can be arrived and then in the limiting condition we will show the equation of motion for the system which is having the distributed parameters that means distributed mass, stiffness etcetera. Of course, here the vibration of string that the string is under uniform tension that is the assumption that we will uh, use here and we will uh, find out the equation of motion of the transverse vibration of string which is used to study the one dimensional wave equation and from that we can see the parameter that is involved in the wave equation is the wave velocity which is very important. So, actually one dimensional wave equation is again a partial differential equation which requires a boundary condition as well as initial condition for the complete solution. Okay. So, first we will uh, see it as a discrete system and then we will derive the equation of transverse vibration of string using the continuum approach with the help of Newton's second law. Thirdly or lastly we will uh, derive the wave equation that means which is a transverse vibration of string using a continuous approach but with the help of Hamilton's principle. Okay. So, transverse vibration of uniform string is very common and this type of vibration can be seen in various physical systems for studying the propagation of waves. Although results involve certain underlying assumptions, nevertheless the results are very important for understanding the theory of wave propagation. Now, to formulate the equation of motion, consider a long heavy string subjected to moderate tension between two rigid supports. Okay. So, say this is the string, initially it is straight, then it is displaced from the initial configuration which was straight the displacement does not remain fixed in its initial position that is the important aspect. So, if you release this disturbance then you can see the disturbance will travel towards support that is towards right or towards left and with some velocity. Okay. So, at t is equal to t 1 another time instant initially disturbance was given in this form, it may be in any form. So, at t is equal to 0 disturbance was given in this form and then it breaks up into 
to separate disturbances and propagate along the string. So, you can see this separation of disturbances take place at t is equal to t 1, further separation, further movement towards support is also seen here at another time instant t is equal to t 2. So, one wave is moving towards right and other to the left with the same velocity. So, that is understood from this uh, physical system. Velocity of wave propagation is independent of the shape and initial displacement. That is very important statement that I am making here that will be proved from the mathematical derivation also. The velocity does not depend on the shape or initial displacement whether you displace it in a sinusoidal motion or you displace it in a triangular fashion, it uh, the velocity will not be influenced by this type of configuration. What important is that the wave velocity depends on the initial tension and the mass density of the material. So, if the string is made of some material generally, so the density of the material that is the mass per unit length, the linear density I may call it a linear density mass per unit length will influence the velocity and its expression is given by V is equal to root over T by rho, where T is the tension in the string and rho is the linear density of the string that is the mass per unit length. So, you can see if the tension of the string is increasing then velocity also increases, whereas the increasing the mass density, linear density of the string, the velocity decreases. So, that relationship is very important and that will be reflected in the formulation when we carry out by any of the three methods that I have mentioned in my earlier slides. Okay. So, now we will do it by discrete approach. So, here let us consider a string which is initially displaced by certain amount and then it is released. So, the vibration will take place and in addition let the string is acted upon by forces, external forces. Most important thing is that the string which has distributed mass the mass is distributed along the length of the string as well as other properties, but of course, here we are not taking into consideration the stiffness of the string and damping also. So, therefore, the mass that is distributed along the string may be uniform and may not be uniform, it may have any other distribution. So, we now divide the string into number of discrete masses. Say here the number of discrete masses are shown here say ith mass is m i. Similarly, the another mass before that is m i minus 1 and m i plus 1. So, let the location of the ith mass along the length of this string is denoted by x i. Similarly, the location of the i minus 1 th mass is denoted by x i minus 1 that I have not shown here. Similarly, other masses can also be located. Okay. So, if I draw the free body diagram of the masses, any mass you take, say let us take m i mass, there is the ith mass m i, we can see here the force f i that is acting on the mass external force and then the tension, the tension in the string is here say s i on that side, side it is s i uh, right side and the left side it is s i minus 1. Similarly, for other masses you can see this uh, have a tension of s i minus 1 and on the left side there will be another tension. Okay. So, that tension will keep the mass 
in uh, equilibrium of course, here the mass is moving. So, it is having acceleration. So, therefore, Newton's second law applies that means, the sum of all the forces in the direction of acceleration should be equal to mass into acceleration. So, here let us consider one mass say m i here we can see that uh, the tension s i is acting here say it is slightly downward direction and here this uh, mass s i minus 1 is also acting in this di direction. Okay. So, the displacement of the string at the ith mass location is y i. There are a number of masses. So, let us first consider the equilibrium of the ith mass from that we will be able to derive the equation of motion. Okay. So, if I uh, take the ith mass then component of the tension Okay, there are tension say S i acting here, it is component in the vertical direction. So, it will be S i sin theta. Now, here if theta is the slope of the cable that is defined by uh, here at this position it will be defined or it will be found by the expression y i plus 1 minus y i divided by delta x i. So, this is the slope and this is nothing but ten theta, but small displacement ten theta equal to sin theta. So, therefore, the component of the tension towards the right acting on the mass i that is m i will be s i into sin theta and sin theta is what? Sin theta is y i plus 1 minus y i divided by delta x i. So, this is the sin theta. So, therefore, we have this uh, component we can determine the component to explain this with the help of a triangle say that you can see here this is y i plus 1 okay, and here say y i. Okay and this is delta x i. So, if this angle is theta then you can obviously see that tan theta for small angle tan theta approximately sin theta is nothing but y i plus 1 minus y i divided by delta x i. So, that is what is taken here and therefore, s i is the tension here and its component will be in the upward direction its component is acting in the upward direction that means, if it is s i then its component here will be s i sin theta and sin theta is this quantity. So, we have written this in the first term of this equation that you can see here. Okay. Here you can see this is what is sin theta. sin theta. Okay. Now, see the tension in the uh, left hand side it is s i minus 1. So, s i minus 1 and again you can see this angle here will be changing. So, therefore, its angle is y i minus y i minus 1 divided by delta x i minus 1 this will be the slope on the right hand side in the discrete system. So, therefore, the component of this along this vertical direction is taken as s i minus 1 into sin of this angle. So, therefore, we can see that two forces are considered or resolved in the vertical direction and other forces that is already acting on the mass is f i. So, f i is taken as an external force and by Newton's second law that is Newton's second law is applied here simply is mass into acceleration. So, m i is the mass here and acceleration is uh, d square y i divided by d t square. 
So, this is the equation written for ith mass. Similarly, we can write the equation of motion for any number of masses. Okay. Now, after rearranging, if I see some common term will be there. So, S i by delta x i and y i plus 1 we have taken from this and then we can take the coefficient of y i. Let us see the coefficient of y i plus 1, coefficient of y i, coefficient of y i minus 1. So, we can isolate this coefficient from this expression and we can write here s i by delta x i into y i plus 1 minus you can take from this equation these are the terms s i divided by delta x i plus s i minus 1 divided by delta x i minus 1 into y i plus the coefficient of y i minus 1 s i minus 1 divided by delta x i minus 1 plus the external force that is acting on the ith mass is f i equal to the inertia force that is on the acting on the ith mass that is m i into d square y i divided by d t square. Okay. Now, we can introduce the following notation because we can see this the change of the y coordinate that is here y plus 1 and here it is y i. So, this change is you can see it is y i plus 1 minus y i and this is taken as delta y i. Okay. So, this is taken as delta y i. So, these quantities are written here. Similarly, delta y i minus 1 is also written y i minus y i minus 1. So, therefore, s i divided by delta x i into delta y i plus y i minus s i by delta x i plus s i minus 1 divided by delta x i minus 1 into y i plus s i minus 1 divided by delta x i minus 1 into y i minus delta y i minus 1 plus f i equal to m i d 2 y i divided by d t square. Okay. So, after rearranging we get this s i delta y i divided by delta x i minus s i minus 1 delta y i minus 1 delta x i minus 1 plus f i equal to m i d 2 y i divided by d t square. Okay. So, this you can recognize the inertia force on the ith mass. So, first two terms in the left hand side represent the differential change of the vertical component of the tension that you can easily recognize it between left and right side of the mass m i. Hence, we can write this is the differential change of the vertical component of the tension that is easily recognized from these two equation this terms and this term. So, we can write the differential quantity delta s i del y i by divided by delta x i plus f i equal to m d 2 y i by d t square. Okay. So, this is the equation that we have obtained, but for the ith mass. So, for the entire domain we now have to obtain this equation. Uh, this equation we obtain. So, dividing by delta x i let us do some arrangement uh, divide both sides by delta x i. So, after dividing both sides by delta x i we get delta by delta x i into s i divided by delta y i by delta x i plus f i by delta x i equal to m i by delta x i d 2 y i by d t square if the number of masses increases indefinitely while the masses become very close to each other such that delta x i tends to 0. So, this is one thing then f i divided by delta x i tends to f x t that is the distributed force. So, this distributed force may be in any form it may be uniformly distributed it may be any other form or it may be a discrete masses which can also be expressed using the 
direct delta function. So, here the other quantity m i by delta x i this represents the distribution of masses along the length of the string. So, using these two assumption in the limiting condition when delta x i tends to 0 f i by delta x i tends to f x t into a n m i by delta x i tends to m x then we get the del by del x del by del x s x del y by del x plus f x t equal to m x del square y by del t square. So, this equation is now the equation of transverse vibration of string. Now, if tension is not changed, tension is not changed and m is constant, then we can see that we can take s x is equal to s which is a constant, it does not vary along the length of the chain or string. Then we can write s del square y by del x square plus f x t equal to m del square y by d t square. So, this is the transverse equation for transverse vibration of string. this is transverse vibration of string. Okay. Now, if I take the free vibration then obviously, f x t is 0 then we have only this equation for constant tension. this is of course, x square. So, this is the equation of motion of free transverse vibration of string or you can see this is the equation which demonstrates the propagation of wave. So, therefore, this is called the wave equation. So, if I write this equation in this form s by m Okay. Then we can introduce this quantity wave velocity is c is equal to root over s by m. m is the mass per unit length or linear density. So, sometimes rho is used for expressing the linear density, but it should not be confused with the density per unit volume. So, here the density is per unit length. So, wave equation now can be written as uh, this like that del square y by del x square equal to c square del square y by del t square. Okay. So, this is the popular wave equation that we already accustomed in many problem in physics or this uh, dynamic structural dynamics. Now, you can see here del square y by del t square requires two initial conditions. What are the initial conditions? At the end of the string, at the ends of the string, the displacement is 0 as well as this velocity is also 0. Okay. So, these two initial conditions are required and requires two boundary conditions also. So, that means, uh, boundary condition at if it is fixed at both ends the transverse displacement at the two ends are 0. Okay. Now, let us derive this with the help of uh, Newton's second law considering the equilibrium approach of a small element of the continuous system. Now, consider a differential element that I have shown here. Okay. This element has the linear length d x, okay. the curve length will be d s, okay. such that you know that d s is related to uh, d x and d y it can be easily proved. Now, you can see here at one end at the left hand end this tension is s x. 
So, first we assume that S is a function of x that is tension is a function of x. On the other hand the tension is changed. So, this is the differential change that we have taken according to Taylor series exp expansion. So, S x plus del s by del x into d x. So, that is the change in uh, this uh, tension at the other end and this is the slope at this end. So, del y by del x and this is the change of the slope at the right hand end. So, right hand end slope becomes del y by del x plus del by del x into del y by del x into d x. Okay. Now, here you can see the displacement here is y, but here change of displacement is y plus d y. Okay. So, considering the equilibrium of the forces, of course, in this element we have the distributed force that is acting here again have a distribution f x t. Okay. So, taking the component of the vertical forces or forces in the vertical direction, we can see here this force first let us see this, this is having the upward component. So, this uh, if I take the s is a function of x first let us take then this is the angle. So, this 10 theta for small displacement 10 theta equal to sin theta. So, this is the component this is the tension vertical component sin theta. Understand? This is the sin theta and this is your s at this end tension. On the other end, it is having the downward component. So, we take s x del y by del x and f x t. Okay. So, this will be your this uh, if you have this term this force that is distributed. So, you have to multiply it by d x. So, it is acting on the length d x. Then on the it should be equilibrated or it should be equal to the inertia force that is m x d x del square y by del t square. So, this is the inertia force. Now, cancelling appropriate terms some terms you can see after simplification some terms will be cancelled and ignoring the second order terms in d x. So, when we encounter d x square or when we encounter this d x into d s or something or d x uh, d y into d x uh, slope is also small and it is multiplied by another small quantity then we can neglect it. So, ultimately the equation reduces to del s by del x into del y by del x into d x plus s del square y by del x square into d x plus f x t into d x f x t into d x equal to m x d x del square y by del t square. So, dividing both sides by d x this can be written in this form now because these two terms can be combined. Earlier these two terms can be combined after cancelling d x from both sides. Okay, cancel d x from both sides and then combine these two terms. Then we can write del by del x into s x del y by del x plus f x t equal to m x. Here d x will not be there because we are dividing both sides by d x. So, right hand side it will represent only m x into del square y by del t square. Okay. If s is a constant here we are taking the notation for tension as s capital S and m is rho linear density of the uh, string material it is also constant and f x t is 0 then we get this s del square y by del x square equal to rho del square y by del t square or we can get del square y by del t square equal to s by rho del square y by del x square. Now, taking s by rho as c square we can now write the equation of wave motion as del square y 
by del t square equal to c square del square y by del x square. So, this is the popular wave equation which we have already derived earlier also using the discrete mass approach and uh, you can see earlier also we have uh, derived this in this form. So, that we actually get it. Okay. So, same results we get by using the Newton second law on a small element of the continuum. The string is assumed to be a continuous system having the distributed mass instead of discrete mass that we have used earlier and in the limiting condition when the the distance between two masses that is the del x is tends to 0, we get this partial differential equation in the earlier case. Now, here we again get the same equation as the wave equation. Okay. In the last case, we will derive this wave equation by Hamilton principle. Now, consider the transverse vibration of string again. Now, to apply the Hamilton's equation, you know that we require energy. So, what are the requirements for Hamilton's equation to formulate the problem with Hamilton's equation? We require kinetic energy. This is kinetic energy. That is the first uh, requirement because the body is in motion. So, it will have kinetic energy. Then we require potential energy okay, or potential. So, for a string, same string, say it is now shown here at some instant having the displacement y at a distance x. Okay. So, naturally if I take a small element of the string here, say any distance say u and this is d u. Okay and string is having the mass of m rho per unit length. Then we have this uh, kinetic energy you can easily write it kinetic energy will be half rho del u. Okay. This is the mass of the element into del y by del t is the velocity square. Okay. Then it should be integrated for all such small element. If the length of the string is L, then the integration limit will be 0 to L. So, this is what is reflected here. We can see it is the expression for kinetic energy. So, kinetic energy here I have denoted by symbol T because in some book you will find that tension is also denoted by capital T, but to avoid confusion between two symbols because kinetic energy is generally expressed by the capital symbol capital T or alphabet capital T. So, to avoid this confusion I have used the uh, symbol for tension as capital S. So, kinetic energy expression is T equal to half integration 0 to L rho del y by del t whole square d x. Okay. Work done by the tension developed in the string. So, now let us calculate the work done. We have a string which is having a tension t. Okay. and original length is your say uh, d x but straight length was d x. Okay. So, the difference in uh, change in length is d s minus d x into tension that is capital denoted by capital S. So, work done by this tension is d w on the element d s into d s minus d x. Now, d s can be written as d s can be easily written as 
d x square d y square okay. because if I take is a d s and then d y is the vertical or the perpendicular distance then from Pythagoras theorem we can get if it is d x it is d y and it is d s then from Pythagoras theorem we get d s equal to root over d x whole square plus d y square. Okay. Now, into a minus s into d x. Okay. Now, this term or the expression inside the radical sign, we can now write in this fashion taking d x square as common and then d x under root will be only d x. So, 1 upon d del y by del x whole square. So, after expanding this equation, this expression using the binomial theorem considering the del y by del x is less than 1, obviously it is less than 1, mod is less than 1, very very small quantity. So, therefore, we can expand this by binomial theorem. Here I have written only uh, two terms, higher than other terms are neglected. So, 1 plus half del y by del x whole square plus other terms are there. So, we neglected here and then uh, into d x of course, d x will be there minus s d x. So, this is coming here. Okay. Keeping only two terms, we can now find that del d w is nothing but s by 2 into del y by del x whole square d x. So, this is the work done on the string due to tension this s capital S. Okay. So, we can now form the Lagrangian. So, Lagrangian L required in the Hamilton equation is now L equal to T minus V. So, it is written as uh, uh, 1 by 2 kinetic energy is T equal to 1 by 2 0 to L integration rho del y by del T whole square into d x minus 0 to L s by 2 del y by del x whole square into d x. Okay. That is the work done that we have already obtained using the derivation from the first principle I have obtained the work done by the tensile force s. Now, let us apply the Hamilton principle. Hamilton principle says that the variation of Lagrangian that is del L when the integrated when it is integrated with the time limits t 1 and t 2 and uh, this integral become 0, because the varied path and this slightly uh, original path coincides at t 1 is equal to t 2. So, therefore, we get that the integration is 0 and all other variational quantity of the displacement will be also non 0, but arbitrary. Okay. So, let us take the variation. So, delta de, this is the sign for variation del or uh, this is the sign for variation we will call it delta and sign for partial derivative we will call del. So, delta third bracket half 0 to L rho del y by del t whole square d x minus 0 to L s by 2 del y by del x whole square into d x. Okay. Here I have written this L that is the Lagrangian. Okay. So, this is nothing but the, uh, the variation of Lagrangian and it is to be integrated between two time limits. Okay. It is to be integrated between two time limits. So, now let us integrate uh, the components. First component is kinetic energy. So, uh, variation of kinetic energy is now taken here and this is the integral that if you take it the integral of variation of kinetic energy is becoming now as this. Okay. So, we are getting this integral Okay. 
so this is the integral for the kinetic energy so it becomes uh, the time integral t1 t2 and for the space integral it is also the limit 0 to l that is the domain of the string into rho del y by del t into delta del y by del t dx dt ok so two integrations are there now carrying out this integration first for kinetic energy variation of kinetic energy we can see that this uh, variation of delta del y by del t can be written after exchanging interchanging the variational operator with the partial derivative operator. So, this can be written as delta del y by del t just interchange it. So, we have written in this way. Okay. So, integrating by parts. So, this is the first function and this is the second function. Okay. So, the first function into integration of the second function. So, that is the result and then integration of second function will give you del y and it is to be evaluated at this time limit t 1 and t 2 minus the derivative of the first function. So, rho del square y by del t square and the integration of the second function that is del y dx dt. Okay. So, you can write this uh, variation of uh, potential energy del v dt equal to time integration t 1 t 2 s 0 to l del y by del x into del del y by del x dx dt. Okay. After integrating, we can again find that because uh, this can again be uh, separated, it can be separated like that del by del x delta y. So, we are now getting again like that, but time integration remains okay. and the second term becomes this. Uh, integration of this uh, the derivative of the first function. So, del square y by del x square and this is integration of the second function again becomes del y ok again becomes del y. So, we are getting this term all right. Now, you can see that this is 0 this directly goes to 0 because del y is arbitrary and also this it is 0 at t is equal to t 1 and t is equal to t 2. Okay. So, we can write finally, this del delta l t that is the variation of Lagrangian integrated with respect to time within the limit t 1 and t 2 equal to rho del y by del t into del y limit t 1 t 2 plus s del y by del x del y and this is the limit put for substituted for this uh, space uh, integration then plus again the integration 0 to l minus rho del square y by del t square plus s del square y by del x square del y del x dt. Okay. Now, note that this is going to be 0. So, therefore, after combining this we now get the equation as because this must be 0 because if it is equated to 0 according to Hamilton principle that is equal to 0 then we must get this is equal to 0. So, that gives the boundary condition either y equal to 0 or y is constant that is a known quantity and s del y by del x that vertical component of the tension at x is equal to 0 or x is equal to l is again is a boundary condition and it is 0. Other quantity that must be 0 because del y is arbitrary and it cannot be 0. So, therefore, we get minus rho del square y by del t square plus s del square y by del x square equal to 0. So, again after arranging we get del square y by del t square equal to c square del square y by del x square and that represents again the wave equation same wave equation that we have already found. And here s by rho is the wave velocity that is c square 
where c is the wave velocity. Okay. Now, let us see the general solution of the wave equation. The most general solution of the wave equation is y is f c t minus x, c t minus x is the argument and another function g c t plus x. So, the solution of wave equation is nothing but superimposition of two function f and g that function is nothing but a function of this uh, argument c t minus x plus another function g c t plus x are completely arbitrary functions of the arguments. Okay. Now, that function may be in the form of exponential or trigonometrical or in any other form. So, y function y is equal to f c t minus x represents a wave traveling towards right as we have seen in the first few slide when the disturbance is given and is released. So, one wave will move uh, travel uh, towards right and another wave will travel towards left. So, c t minus x represents a wave travel towards right whereas, f c t plus x represents a wave traveling towards left. So, this is the general solution. However, in the next class I will derive this equation and that equation that I have written a general solution is known as the Alembert solution for the wave equation and we will interpret the results with different illustration. So, nature of wave solution you have now understood, but derivation is uh, to be completed and I will do it in the next class. So, let us see what we have done in this class. In this lecture, one dimensional wave equation was derived with an analogy to the transverse vibration of string based on three approaches. What are the approaches? One is discrete approach considering large number of masses interconnected by massless string and number two a continuum approach using Newton's second law that is we consider an element of the string of small length d x and then we have shown that this uh, equilibrium conditions or applying the Newton's second law or d Lambert's equation the same wave equation can be obtained. But in the first case we have to obtain the equation in the partial differential equation form in the limiting condition using the limit theory. Now, third is Hamilton's equation three methods we have uh, applied to derive the wave equation, we have got the same results and then general solution to the initial disturbance that when a initial disturbance is applied to the string and it is released, no other forces is acting and then the how the wave travels along the string that is uh, stated with the help of superimposition of two functions the arguments of the functions is c t minus x and another function is c t plus x. So, here c is the wave velocity that depends on the tension in the string and the linear density of the material of the string and no other content does not depend on the form of the initial displacement. Okay. So, the velocity depends solely on the tension in the string and the material density. So, two waves travels towards left and right as we have discussed and the next class we will see how the, the general solution can be derived by using D Lambert's approach and how the solution can be interpreted to discuss the wave propagation when the initial disturbance is known in definite form. Okay. So, thank you very much. Thank you.